This is Tony Gonzalez from Made in Metal, and today we are going to talk to Henrik Brockman and Luca Celito, members of Timeless Fairy Tale, that recently released the first CD. How are you, friends? We're fine. I'm, fine. I'm, yeah, I'm doing great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Fantastic. So uh, the band was founded by you, Henrik, and uh, Luca Celito. Luca came from the band Stamina. You were the yeah. original frontman in Royal Hunt and Evil Masquerade. And uh, Luca also works for uh, Young Parry Rocks Emporium. And now, taking account your uh, musical background, how did you met together and decided to create this new band? We we known each other for, uh, what, what is it like for how many years, Luca? I mean, uh... Well, about 15 friend. years, maybe 15 yeah, probably, years. Yeah, yeah. Um, Luca is a little bit younger than me. Not not much, just a little bit younger. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> he used to listen to to some of my early recordings with with uh, Roy Hunt. And um, then we talked on the internet. This fantastic uh, internet media. We uh, we uh, exchanged um, ideas and meaning about music and stuff like that. And then uh, it was only natural. Uh, that uh, eventually we have to make something together. First, he invited me to do some uh, some vocals on the, on stamina. I did some some uh, what's it called um, duet with the uh, with the, the singer from stamina, and then uh, he invited me later on to do a full full song on his solo album. That's that's the short story. Look at look at he can tell the long story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, first we met. Um... In person in Denmark when I came to yeah. visit in 2018, so we had the chance to to talk much deeper about music, our personal tasks, and um, the the year after I invited Henrik uh, to to take part to my solo album, so he came here to to my place, and that's that's when I played him a demo um, uh, of the song. Uh, Forever and the Day, which is now track number two uh, on the Timeless Fairy Tale album. Eric uh, quickly recorded, you know, um, uh, the demo, and uh, we we both thought that it was great. The, the result was uh, was very very interesting. So um, we talked about uh, recording a, a full album together. Luca, I have read that you write the music, all the music from the. A CD and please now when you ask tell me the name of the of the new CD tell me uh, yeah when you write the music you write the music thinking of Henrik to sing yes uh, when I wrote the songs for the for the album a story to tell I had the of, of, of course I had in mind Henrik's voice uh, because basically we formed the band together so it, it, it was our project, so it it was very very interesting for me to to have in mind the, the voice of the singer since the beginning during the writing process, because uh, I've been a, a huge Eric's fan for many years now, so I know his voice very well, and um, as I was writing the songs, I already can can hear him in my. In my head, the final result. I know that it sounds weird, maybe, but uh, I'm a huge fan of Eric, so I know his voice so well that uh, it sounded in my in my head during the, the writing process. Can you believe it, Eric? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. Uh, Luca, know, Luca knows my voice better than myself, so that, that's interesting. <laughs> Well, actually, it's uh, it's true what he says because uh, I could feel also when we started recording that uh, I wasn't pushed any further than I actually were capable of. So uh, and we talked a lot about it's you know my voice is not getting uh, stronger by the year. So, um, but I actually he managed to push push me. Uh, so uh, I sounded just like a young young guy at twenty two years old or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he he knows my voice, and so I mean uh, it's very amazing. Uh, Sometimes you 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 have to record something that is maybe not fit your voice so well. Then um, 
it's either too low or too high or too complicated or something. So Luca, he hit the spot. It's fantastic. Yeah. And uh, Luca, this is the reason why you decide to focus the music on neoclassical metal? Basically, when we decided to form the band, um, we discussed about the musical direction, of course, before I started writing the songs. So um, we both agreed uh, on making an album uh, which kind of reminded uh, of Eric's past in, the, in his previous bands, Royal Hunt and Evil Masquerade, uh, and also some, uh, you know, some elements coming from my past in Stamina, a little bit of fusion harmonies here and there, a little bit of progressive approach in the arrangements. Um, and and we, we both like uh, neoclassical rock, metal, uh, hard rock. Uh, I, I think we, we have a lot in, in common musically. Uh, so in, that's how we, we made this kind of decision to, to go in this stylistic direction. Henrik. I uh, know that you left Royal Hunt in 1994, but always remained part of the Royal family. So I assume that uh, you, your departure wasn't in bad terms. Why did you decide to leave the band, Royal Hunt, and at the same time stay close to them? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a few years ago now, so uh, I don't remember all the details, but you know, we had, we had been working for before the first release, we we've been working hard for for many years uh, to to actually sell the first World Hunger album. We got very close in that period of time. You know, every every member of of the old Royal Hunt, the, the original Royal Hunt band, uh, I still stay in contact with them. Especially Andre, I visited him uh, was it yesterday or the day before yesterday, uh, just to talk uh, vinyl. Uh, you know, which new vinyls did he buy? <laughs> which which new vinyls did I buy? Um, but also, uh, I get invited to to all the almost all the albums he made since small parts here and there, maybe just some backing vocals. Um, it, I don't know why, you know. It we had we'd been touring a lot at that time, and um, we got a new management. Uh, I think maybe some disagreement about my vocal abilities. I have no. I mean, it, it was just we were just fed up. We had been staying together for six years. Uh, traveling to Japan, to America, and stuff like that. So, um, I think it was time for me to leave. In my... Otherwise, we would probably have killed each other. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, we we stayed in contact, and uh, we're very very close friends. Still. Both both musically, but also like just friends who drink coffee. And Luca. Uh, what happened with the stamina and the other projects you are involved? Uh, basically, uh, I, I, I'm, I understood that um, the other members of the band didn't have the same passion for this kind of music as I have. So this was, there was this uh, difference in our personal priorities. You know, I wanted to do more. I wanted to... to, to spend more time in the rehearsal room and stuff like that. Uh, so um, uh, at a certain point, they are all great musicians. They are all friends, but um, I decided to, 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 to quit, to stop the project. And uh, the interesting thing is that uh, after I recorded my solo album, The Voice Within, which also features Eric, as, as we told you, um, I started to to get some calls from uh, very very great very good musicians and uh, singers such as uh, Ian Parry or Marco Garau from uh, Magic Opera or Fabio Calluori from Die for My Sins. So I started to work also as a session guitarist, which is good. But uh, um, as long as it comes to my own music. The interesting thing is that is that now I'm involved in the Timeless Fairy Tale band with Eric and the other guys, Victor and Carmine. So th this is my priority, musically sp speaking, at the moment. Eric and Luca, yeah. do, you, do you have plans to go out on tour? Actually, we are. We are right now. We are kind of 
discussing how can we make it happen because uh, we we got some some uh, some some interesting uh, offers to to play live uh, in uh, in Sweden first of all then you know I've, I've talked to a lot of people who wants to to listen to this album live but uh, so so we actually started to kind of plant that little seed you know called let's let's play live uh, so we got a fantastic keyboard player also on board now now it's only it's only about buying some some airplay tickets and uh, rehearsing a little you know together and then uh, of course find someone who who's willing to also uh, put some some hard work in it and also finance a little bit of the tour if you want to go to and first of all we're thinking about maybe we're going to make some some uh, maybe some festivals next summer if if we can uh, Commence, but we have no plans. It's it's all in in the in our heads right now. But we are really planning to go live because we all, I think, I can especially me, I really want to perform this live also, and I'm sure that we can we can do a pretty good uh, performance also. Okay, so well, was that a, was that a yes or no? <laughs> 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 yes. it was a, I'm a diplomat, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so. I have read some reviews from the new CD from Timeless uh, Fairy Tale, and uh, the people say the the music in a story to tell is elegant, as they define the music as elegant. How could you define it, the music in a single word? Well, I I think that elegant is a good adjective because we have this strong classical influences so our sound is a bit majestic you know uh, the, the harmony is not the typical rock and roll harmony there is a lot of uh, secondary dominance I, I don't want to go too much into music theory of course but um, I, I think that everyone can listen that is it is more elaborated than the typical classic metal album you know Nothing against metal, I love metal, but uh, I, I think that that's why they define us elegant, you know, il elegant sound. I don't know. What do you, what do you think, Eric? Yeah, I, I like the word elegant, uh, but, I mean, uh, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we could also use a lot of other words. I, I think this is very, um, when you think of, uh, you know, the, the whole title, the story to tell, and uh, the, the name of the band, uh, Timeless Fairy Tale, it's also a little bit... Uh, Dramatic, maybe. I mean, but uh, elegant, dramatic and elegant, maybe. <laughs> but uh, it's not easy. If people think it's elegant, then uh, I think I'm going to join that choir, so to speak. I think it's a fantastic word. <laughs> yes. Now, Henrik, uh, I have read in those reviews that some writers said that your voice reminds Klaus Main, the singer from Scorpio. Do you agree? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, some people say, some people say definitely not. So, I mean, I'm not trying to sound like uh, of like mine. Uh, I think he, he's a fantastic singer. He's uh, maybe maybe uh, he's he's a German guy, so he has a little bit of an uh, American accent. Maybe maybe I have some of the same accent. People can relate to that accent. Uh, I'm not I'm not originally English speaking. The same as uh, of mine. Maybe they have. Maybe they can hear some. Some, some similarities, and I don't know, maybe. But um, I try to sound like my, like myself. But I'm, of course, I'm influenced by so many singers that if I start uh, talking about, <laughs> then we can sit here forever. Because I mean, I've been listening to so many uh, fantastic singers, and there's there's still uh, new singers coming up that I'm I'm kind of uh, amazed about listening to. Klaus Meiner, I like Klaus Meiner. Luca, uh, do you write all the music, and who write the lyrics? I, I wrote both the, the music and the lyrics, but um, as soon as I was done with, with every single song, I sent the demo to Eric. So we discussed it about the, the interpretation and the, and the, some details of, of the arrangements. I also discussed it uh, with Victor Inebjorn, the drummer, about the drum fields, and with Carmine Vivo, the, the, the bass player, about the bass lines, you know. I just give the other guys a general idea of the song, and then we all together uh, bring the song to life. You know, every, everyone uh, 
adds his own in interpretation. It, after all, this, this is a band, this is not my solo thing, so of course, uh, well, we are collaborative from this point of view. But I have a clear idea, you know, a clear idea of the, um, of the whole picture. And um, I give some demos that, uh, to the other guys, some demos that uh, are quite clear. You, know? you, you can understand uh, where the music is going to, where the, the lead vocal line is going to. As far as I see it, I don't know if uh, Eric agrees with me on this point. Oh, Eric. Yes, this is the next question. Uh, when you receive the lyrics, did you need to change a lot or only a few parts? No, you, you. It's very, very, very few parts I had to change because of some maybe some some words. Some words are, uh, you know, when when you get lyrics, sometimes uh, you can have a word that is not very good to kind of to sing, or, you know. So then you think about can we make maybe the same story, but just change a few words and then uh, it's easier to sing or it sounds better to sing. But otherwise, I mean, if, if, if I start to change too much, then the whole idea of the of the story would be messed up. So uh, when when we change something, we do it with, with respect for the original story. So, so it's 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 not that much. I mean, I'm, I'm used to working like this, uh, people handling the uh, lyrics or musical lines, and then I kind of interpret it out. How how will I how will I sing this part? So it sounds like me, you know. But I think I think it's it's a good work form because I'm not that productive in in, in songwriting or in lyrics lyrics writing or something. So I think it's it's good to have Luca on board because <laughs> he's very productive. <laughs> yeah. And tell me, it happened it happens the same with the uh, vocal melodies. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because you know, uh, I think from um, the musician point of view, but Henrik is the singer and has got to to breathe, to sing, to really sing the parts. So maybe uh, during the performance, he notices that he needs more air in some points. So we we had to delete a word. Or to, or to change a little bit, uh, as, as Eric, Eric told, the, the text, the lyrics. You know, small changes to make the, the, the performance greater, I think. Yeah. When you were recording the vocal parts, there was a, a song that for you was special, more beautiful, uh, that it was closer to you? I actually, I got a lot of the songs... Uh kind of grew on me when we started recording. They, I thought that the, these three songs would be my favorite. And then we, when we started recording in the studio, I suddenly kind of, when, when we started to, to find the right uh, expression on, on the songs, I kind of started changing my uh, my favorites. <laughs> Each time we were finished, I got a new favorite. So, uh, but but I really I really like the, the, the title song uh, because I, I use a lot of my, uh, my vocal abilities on that one because it's a lot of air, a lot of storytelling, a lot of uh, you know it's it's a soft song, and then you know you can also, you can put more heart into it, sort of. Thing. But I also I also like a lot of the other songs. So. But but that one that title song is a little bit uh, more my favorite than the others. But otherwise, <laughs> they're all my favorite. I have two favorites. I'm going to ask you about, and I'm going to explain why are my favorites. Yeah. For example, the first is Master of Illusion. And I consider that the vocal part and the choirs are really, really good in this uh, song. And I would like to ask you how it was written or how the idea comes to your mind, how it was recording about this song, Master of Illusion. You know, since Eric is a very versatile singer, he can sing in many different ways. I thought that uh, it'd be cool to, to add a, a bluesy track on the album, which is a little bit atypical on a power metal album, neoclassical metal album. So I, I kind of reminded of his past in the early records from Royal Hunt, you know, that also had some, some bluesy, bluesy influences. 
and um, I, I decided to, to write a song in that vein, but I also added some jazzy harmonies here and there. Uh, so you can hear some strange chords in some parts. And um, I think that, that that's that's the interesting thing to to underline in working with uh, such a great singer like Eric that you can you can write in many different subgenres, different styles, and uh, he seems to always find a way to interpret the song in a great way. And the other song is the best part of your life that in some parts remind me the first Royal Hunt recordings. Maybe it's because it's Henrik, but maybe because you write it thinking in the influence of Royal Hunt. It was done yeah. on purpose or it's simple because Henrik is the singer. Mm. As we told you before, we decided since the beginning to, to make an album that had some similarities with our past, especially Eric's past. So I can understand, you know, the, the comparison with the Royal Hunt or, or even with the Ingwe Malmsteen or Stratovarius. Um, so I don't, I don't know what to add. Eric, what do you think? Yeah, man, I mean, I've been also, I've always been, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not classically uh, trained like like uh, many of the musicians have been played with, you know, Andrew, he was, Classical, he had the classical background. Lucas, very classical influence, and plays an amazing classical guitar. <laughs> I know because I heard. So, but I come, I come from a kind of a more bluesy background. But it, that doesn't mean that you can't love the same genres. You know, you, you can't, uh, you can't work on the same genres. So, in the early Royal Hunt, we make some weird stuff. You know, with 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 a horse riding and stuff like that. You know, some some funny parts. With where Andre actually was kind of okay, this sounds very bluesy, but that, that was because I was very influenced by singers like Robert Plant and you know, very bluesy singers in, in the beginning of my career. But uh, eventually, I ended up being more uh, trained or more classically or whatever you can say. But I, I think it's fantastic to do something that is a little bit out of the what well, kind of you go out, out on a thin ice, you know, you don't know if you're going to break through or anything. So, I think it's it's it also keeps you a little bit, you know, on your toes. Will will people like this if they also like the other songs? So, but when you hear the hear the album, it's more like when you really go into to details, you can hear that there's some some weird parts here and there. I think it's a very massive album. You can still hear it's the same because it's the same guys playing probably. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's, if I'm misinterpreting, but. Okay. That was mine. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Henrik and Luca, those were my questions. If you want to say something to say goodbye to the audience to promote the new recording, this is your moment. This is this is the moment. Yeah. Well, first <laughs> of all, thank thank you very much for for giving us the opportunity to kind of to spread the the word out about the album because it's not easy today to to get to get. Uh, airtime you know you don't have have the same radio or the same mtv and stuff like that so we're very grateful for anyone who wants to to listen to us uh, and, and we really hope that people go out and buy the album give it a listen listen to it on spotify on whatever we prefer you buy the vinyl i don't know if there's anyone left but we make some more uh, so that's all i can say and keep keep going out to concerts keep buying records you know yeah that's my final <laughs> final word Final words. And you, Luca? Final. Well, first of all, thanks to you, Tony, for this uh, interview. It was a pleasure. And uh, thanks to all the people who are supporting us with a lot of kind words, kind messages. Thanks to our labels, Vichy's Olium Production from Sweden and Marquis Avalon from Japan. And uh, I invite all... Uh, rock and metal fans to listen to our album A Story to Tell. Give it a try. <laughs> so thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for the music, Luca and Henrik. Thanks to you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, okay. So bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. See you.